Well, hello, you are watching The Political Vigilante. Oh, graphic coming up. There's the palm strike. Well, what's going on, huh? A lot of crazy shenanigans of Trump in the news, and this article was submitted by Patreon supporter Alex Talk. It was by, it's uh, by Chris Hedges. It was actually written at the beginning of this year in January, but they have reprinted it at truthdig.com. I think Hedges is on vacation, but it bears repeating in light of what is going on right now, okay? So it's The Useful Idiocy of Donald Trump by Chris Hedges. It was, I said it was re-released on August 5th of this year, but he put it out, I think, January 28th. The link is in the show notes below. And it is more just uh, prolific writing from Chris Hedges. I reference Death of the Liberal Class by him and numerous other articles from Truth Dig. I cover him a lot because he seems to very much have his finger on the pulse. And what this article goes into, and I'll read some excerpts from it, is it's very much showing how they're keeping him in power. And he references this book that was written by an author with the last name of Wolf. I, I, Trump doesn't want to be in power. He never, he didn't. He was hoping to come in third place and just get a re, you know his own TV channel out of this. That's all he was hoping to do. He did not want to be president. And he just oh delegates like turns everything over to another corporate military powerful person that takes everything over so he doesn't have to deal with it. That's what Trump is all about. And Noam Chomsky said this when Trump first came to power, you know, when, when he was sworn in in January of 2017, he goes, if they're going to, the only way Trump will be out of there is if he doesn't play ball with the deep state, they'll get rid of him. But now he does whatever they want. Bombs everybody, ramps up the military. So they, he's a useful idiot. And then he's very good at, he's out there on the internet distracting everybody. His tweets and his craziness. Oh, can you believe what Trump said in the corporate media, which is a, a propaganda tool of the military machine and the corporate complex, whatever you want to call it, is out there, oh, Trump said this crazy thing and that crazy thing. And this Russia investigation, okay, look, if he's guilty, he is, he, is, he is guilty. But again, I say this time and time again, why can't we investigate anything else? Why can't we have a serious discussion on what we're doing in Yemen? Why can't we sit there and go, uh, Flint water needs to be fixed today, right now. No, we got to go Russia, Russia, Russia. So here's some excerpts from this article that what Hedges says. The problem with Donald Trump is not that he is imbecilic and inept. It is that he has surrendered total power to the oligarch and military elites. They get what they want. They do what they want. Although the president is a one-man wrecking crew aimed at democratic norms and institution, although he has turned the United States into a laughing stock around the globe, our national crisis is embodied not in Trump, but the corporate state's now unfettered pillage. That's what I'm, that's all he's, they, he's just letting them run free. It's the thing, and, and I just says it too in this, I've always said Trump is just the most vulgar version of every other president we've seen. All the deregulation that happened under Bush and Clinton and the first Bush and Reagan. I mean, it's just been on and on. Goldman Sachs has been in every presidential cabinet since Reagan. It was Bill Clinton that, that turned over, uh, that repealed Glass-Steagall, which was FDR banking reg regulation from the 1930s. He repealed that on his way out the door in 1999. So Trump is just very useful. He's so good at distracting everybody. Everybody gets all worked up. We're, we're seeing the left do what it did under eight years of Bush. Just anyone in there, just get any Democrat in there, just get anyone in there, get any, just anybody, anybody. I heard that for eight years of Bush. Just anybody, anybody. You know, Howard Dean was this lefty progressive and now he's Mr. War. He's, Mr. he's smearing, he's going after progressives. The corporate state has bought up everybody or they've crushed people or smeared them or pushed them out or whatever. Chris Hedges can't write for the New York Times or the Washington Post. He has to write for truthdig.com and go on the real news, which are great. I love them, but there's no way they're going to let Hedges in the mainstream media anymore. Trump, who has no inclination or ability to govern, has handed the machinery of government over to the bankers, corporate executives, right-wing think tanks, intelligence chiefs, and generals. They are extradating the few regulations and laws that inhibited a 
that inhibited a naked kleptocracy. They are dynamiting the institutions, including the State Department, that served interests other than corporate profit and are stacking the courts with right-wing corporate-controlled ideologues. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They love Trump. We got to remember, we never forget the fact that when he ran, he was running on a uh, anti-interventionist campaign. He said all of his other crazy shit. He's probably a goddamn rapist, but he was talking about why are we in Afghanistan? There's all these tweets. We've seen all these tweets. Tucker Carlson put these tweets in there. Tucker Carlson was calling out, why are we, Trump was like, why are we bombing Syria? Why do we have troops in Afghanistan? Why are we spending all this money? That part of that populism helped him get elected. He stood on a stage with all these Republican candidates. He called Jeb Bush. He's like, 9-11 happened on your dad's watch. Like, he just blew through the Republican Party like it was nothing. He got into power, he became president, and the deep state sat him down and said, you better play ball or we're going to get you out of here. When he got elected, everyone was like, wait a minute, maybe this will be good for Wall Street. Look, the neocons in the D.C. Beltway, they all wanted Hillary because she's great for war. She's great for war. I mean, she's Secretary of State. She's she helped Obama set the Middle East on fire. She, all those countries that gave to the Clinton Foundation, boy, weird, they all got defense contracts. Huh, that's interesting. Must have been a wacky coincidence. The grotesque visage of Trump is the true face of politicians such as George W. Bush, Bill and Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. The Clintons and Obama, unlike Bush and Trump, are self-aware and therefore cynical but all lack a moral compass. This is what I say, like what Trump is doing now with ICE, it's so awful and offensive, but Obama deported two million people. This broken political system, this klepto klep kleptocracy, this oligarchy is what created Trump. When Obama let 5.2 million foreclosures happen and didn't prosecute anybody, we're on the eve of another recession. I don't want one to happen, but I don't see how we're going to avoid it because Obama didn't do dick. Dodd-Frank? Oh, thanks. But Hedges is absolutely right. Here's some excerpts from Michael Wolff's book, uh, Fire and Fury, Inside the Trump White House. Quote, a close Trump friend who was also a good Bill Clinton friend found them eerily similar except that Clinton had a respectable front and Trump did not. Wolf writes. And this is the lesser of two evils Kool-Aid that we all have been drinking in America for decades. We'd rather have Bill Clinton back because he's, he's charming, Obama's charming, George W. Bush is charming and cute and Ellen has him on his show, lovable little war criminal George W. Bush. They would never tweet like this. They had reverence for the office of the presidency, yeah. While Bill Clinton was putting how many black men behind bars? While he was deregulating everything? While Bush was lying about weapons of mass destruction and letting Dick Cheney, Dick, the privatization of the military, you know, Halliburton and all that, all those jobs that used to be done by the military, that, that was all Dick Cheney. He helped get that passed through. Yeah. Obama. <laughs> He said, he expanded the war powers. He said, we don't need to send boots on the ground. We can just have these never-ending, protracted, special op drone wars. We just send a handful of special op guys and just drone strike the fuck out of everybody. Military industry makes money. That's what they do. Trump is just the most ugly version of all of this. And this is... The, the great thing I love about Hedges, he always gives fantastic historical context. So if you read Death of the Liberal Class, he talks about how President Woodrow Wilson hired George Creel 
to come up with a marketing campaign to sell America on World War I. We did not want to go to World War I. It was referred to as the Wall Street War. <laughs> George Creel helped market that war. The war to end all wars, that was a marketing slogan. That song, over there, over, that was, they wrote that, it was marketing. They got movies about the Kaiser made and this new film industry. So Hedges has a fantastic historical uh, context to, with which to place America. And we're lining up eerily similar to all of these other empires that collapsed. Empires expand beyond their capacities to sustain themselves and then go bankrupt. Sound familiar? The Sumerian, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, Mayan, Khmer, Ottoman, and Astro-Hungarian empires all imploded in a similar fashion. The lessons of history are clear, but the illiterate charlatans who seize power in the dying days of empire know nothing of history. All they know how to do is squeeze you for every dollar. They don't even see that their short-sighted greed will be their own undoing. If they wanted to keep capitalism going, they would like, we need more regulation. We need people making decent jobs and having health care and good education so they can keep buying our products. Instead, everyone's going to be so, the next, the next recession is going to bring out who knows what, massive strikes, relocations, protests, sit-ins, shutdowns, whatever, because people just, if I'm not working, I can sit there and block a street. If I got to work, you got me working two, three jobs a day, then I can only go maybe on a Saturday or I'll just repost a Facebook meme. Meme, meme, meme. Trump's bizarre ramblings and behavior also serve a useful purpose. They are a colorful, colorful diversion from the raising of democratic institutions. As cable news networks feed us stories of the trysts with a porn actress and outlandish tweets, the real work of the elites is being carried out largely away from public view. Chris Hedges has been around the globe. He's seen it all happen. And he's watching it unfold in real time right here in America. It's why we need real progressives. These little progressive victories we're getting, they're important. I'm glad all of you are getting involved and getting informed. Thank you for watching the show.